Okay, good morning. This is the Senate Health and Welfare Committee, and it is March 11th, Friday. It is crossover day, which is an exciting time for all of us here in the State House. We've been working double time for sure, and our Ledge Council and Joint Fiscal folks triple time. So uh, we have three bills that we're looking at uh, to finalize today, a final markup and vote. And the first bill we have is S-285, uh, a bill relating to health care transformation. Jen Carby is here with us. And Jen, I think we have a new draft of the bill. Is it 4.1? That's right. Yes. That 4.1. Okay. So why don't we start with that? We'll just go through the bill and you can identify for us. I know a lot of work obviously happened outside of the room yesterday with uh, the Agency of Human Services, the Green Mountain Care Board and others reviewing the draft. And so it received some comments um, and their, their edits in, in the bill. Why don't you go through and we'll, we can talk about each one when we get to it. Do you, do you want to take a minute before you start? No, oh, that's great. Okay. All Thank right. you. We're good. All right. Good morning. Jennifer Carvey, Office of Legislative Counsel. So, yes, we are looking at draft 4.1 of S285. And I sent this around to you all last night and to a number of stakeholders, the ones who I was remembering had been involved and encouraged them to forward it to anyone I had left off the list. i um, just wanting to get people an opportunity to see it before this morning. Um, so what we I've, I've highlighted in yellow the changes from the prior draft. So in the first section, the first change is in the title of the section and I changed it from hospital global payment design to hospital value based payment design. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. Can I go for Corey? Okay. I was just thinking that as we're putting this in as a title, and I think it's a great- uh, it's, Just for the section. It's just for the chapter, right, for, for changes. Is there a definition of value-based payment in the chapter itself? I don't believe there is necessarily a definition of value-based payments. I think it's a, it's a concept more than a defined term. Okay. Yeah. Um, but this isn't going in statute. This is just a session law provision that is okay. uh, appropriating funds to create a process for distributing value-based payments. And then it says, including global payments. So okay, so at some point, uh, I think it, it doesn't necessarily, it might be helpful to have that definition of what a value-based payment is and how inclusive it is and what it means, because I think as we, and I'm, I'm feeling that frustration as I talk with my peers in the Senate, they're asking questions and then, then you have to go through this whole explanation if there were. So let's let's consider working on that and whether it happens right here, that's, it doesn't have to happen right here, but it, we could move it along to other committees and make sure that at some point we have a common understanding. That's yeah, all. and I may look to see if there if CMMI or some yeah. others at the federal level have created a definition that would make sense for us to use here. I wouldn't want ours to be unintentionally, unintentionally under or over inclusive. Perfect, thank you, that'd be great. All right, so I made a note here to potentially add a definition of value-based payments. If there is anyone watching who is um, familiar with a good federal definition, I encourage you to send that my way. Please, right um, away, send it to Aaron. Copy, Jen. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank Thanks. you. It's a good suggestion. That was my question. Good. Oh, perfect. Great minds. I, I, the only reason I was making that change is just because we had used that, added that language throughout based on the recommendations from Tina. And even though there isn't a definition, it's expected that this is a broader, it, this captures more than the global budget. Right. Yeah. Because of the way the language now online. 17 of that section. This is all about hiring consultants to assist the board in developing a process for establishing and distributing value-based payments, including global payments. So it doesn't necessarily mean exclusively global payments. That's the earlier version. Uh, all right, then on the second page, so we're still looking at this process, developing this process 
for distributing value-based payments from all payers to Vermont hospitals that will do a few things, move away from fee-for-service, provide predictable, sustainable funding. And then in C, uh, this is where we had that solely language yesterday that we talked about taking out. Uh, so this would now say, take into consideration the necessary costs and operating expenses. That was a request that came in from the hospitals. Um, so, so that's a one um, proposal for your consideration that these payments would take into consideration both the necessary costs and the operating expenses of providing services and not be based on historical charges. So I know they agreed to take out solely. I saw that. Right. I think, well. I think that what was expressed was that they were comfortable taking out solely as long as there was this um, added concept of operating expenses that aren't necessarily just um, cost-based. So my, my suggestion is as you go through, if there's something here you'd like to flag, flag it, but if you're okay with it, we'll just continue on. And then I will also note that in what came in this morning from Mary Kate Mullen from Spy State Primary Care, that is, her request would be uh, instead of talking about not being based on historical charges, that it not be based, I think she's potentially added back solely on historical reimbursement. Because reimbursement is often lower than charges, and if we're using future data, that data reflects reimbursement amount, not charges. I think we'll leave it as charges. That, okay. that opens up a whole new avenue of discussion. And then, sure. yeah, that, they, that's, remember, this has to, hopefully, this bill will get to the House, so we'll be able to have them. Right. Okay. I will not make that change. Uh, just looking through the, okay, for the next one. So then no other changes in that section. So I don't know if there's anything more in that section that you want to look at or just go through and, and no, I think we've been a little bit changed. Okay. Section two, um, the only change in the first part is just that I added the word system. So it's talking, this is the 2.5 million to the Green Mountain Care Board. And it had said um, to build on successful healthcare delivery reform. And I think throughout we've been talking about healthcare delivery system reform. So I was proposing making that consistent there. Can you remind me, um, Nolan, was the 2.5 billion the original request from the Green Bank Care Board? No, that was the 3 million. That was Sorry. the 3 million. And this is where we um, look for 500,000 for other work. Okay, thank you. Right. Is that consistent with your? Yes. Great. And then the other change that is here on page five is a new subsection E. This is based on recommendations from Patrick Flood. Um, he had talked, he had recommended directing the agency of human services to identify the funding necessary for community agencies to effectively implement the redesign and provide the proper level of services. Um, I thought if they were identifying the funding necessary, it would make sense for them to actually report that. So I put in a report, you don't have to keep that. Um, and in fact, the agency of human services would like you to take out E, they say E1, but E2 doesn't make sense without E1, um, take out E in its entirety. But as written, this would direct on or before, and I put January 15th, 2024, just looking at the timeline for the Green Mountain Care Board's expected work on the community engagement process and development of the plan, which seemed like it was projected to go through 2023. So by January, 2024, potentially there would be an idea of what that plan looked like. So on or before January 15th, 2024, the Director of Healthcare Reform at AHS would report to a number of committees, including in the Senate, this committee, Finance and Appropriations, the amount of state funding that would be necessary for Vermont's community-based healthcare and social service providers to effectively implement the plan developed pursuant to subsection A of this section as it relates to community providers and, and to, I think, well, uh, and to ensure they are able, something like that, uh, to provide the appropriate level of services to consumers. And then for purposes of this section, we've defined community-based healthcare and social service providers. And I put in the same groups he had 
So it's the FQHCs. He just had designated agencies. I included the specialized service agencies, assuming you would want both. Home health agencies, area agencies on aging, adult day providers, residential care homes, nursing homes. He did not have assisted living residences. I, I wasn't sure if you would want that or not. I did not put it in, but wanted to flag it. Providers of services addressing homelessness and community action agencies. So a lot for you to think about here. Um, this was a this was a, a long conversation between uh, and among uh, with uh, this really comes from Robin and Ina. This does not come from Robin and Ina. Where is it? Where is it? This right. This comes from Patrick Flood. Oh, that's right. One of his recommendations. Okay. And I'll, okay. And in so fact, that's... Ina and through Shayla Livingston have sent you something asking you to please take, take out this out. One E one. Yes, they say take out E one. I wouldn't leave E two. There's no purpose for E two if there's no E one. But I recognize their objection is with E one. Well, the question we have. Let's flag this, and then the question I would have is how essential is this work to the design and uh, transformation work? Was this something that would be a next step? This is potentially a next step. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's it's looking at what it would, you know, I think we had talked about this a bit yesterday, but as I understand the proposal, it's really looking at what the plan is calling for. And if there's a, if the plan is looking to shift services to the communities, what is the capacity of the community providers to deliver those services? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, if we put, if we layer this in, then the design, everything has to happen all at once. And we, We'd like to see the first step. So I, I'm not unhappy about removing that at this point. I think it is a next step, but I can I'll listen to other members of the committee. I, I think it's very important to question that. So for putting a date out that is. Right, you can, I, I picked sort of what, what seemed like the earliest reasonable or rational, not even necessarily reasonable, but the, you know, the earliest possible date, given the timeline for that process to work, you could put it out, you know, a year or two. If it were later. 2026, I wonder what would, would it still be timely? But it's, at, I think it absolutely is necessary if, if the date were changed. No one does that. For the record, no one like, well, one thing to think about Two is you're asking for a report in two years from now. In two years from now, who knows what you'll be thinking about, what information you will already have. I know. And while this information is important, it may not be important to you two years from now because you might be already past this. So just think about you either want it sooner or you put a flag in it for next year. You know. I'm sort of feeling that way. And if, if we might be able to refer to uh, this kind of assessment later on. Uh, yeah, and you may also want to make sure it continues to be on the agency's radar, radar. which I, yeah. I expect it is already, but but just this particular concern about not just planning for things to shift to the community, but what is the capacity of the community to provide those services. Okay, let's do that. I mean, let's take it out here, but then I, I see Mike Fisher, but you can remind us where, where you think you want to insert it. We'll also go All right, so okay. for now. It's not a bad idea. It's just it's not it's, it doesn't feel timely for everything else that's in the bill. And there are a lot of people who are ahead of this. So a lot of people are ready to do all this. But uh, yeah. OK, so then we get to section three. Section three is the result of the work between Ina and Robin after this committee. Right. Um, during yesterday and this is so it's now called the development of development of proposal for subsequent all-payer model agreement and it includes an appropriation this would direct the director of healthcare reform in ahs in collaboration with the green mountain care board and i think in earlier versions there's been consultation happening and, and you talked with them yesterday about kind of who's driving things so in this case the director of healthcare reform is named first but it's a collaboration with the green mountain care board and they're directed to design and develop a proposal for a subsequent agreement with CMMI to secure Medicare's continued participation in multi-payer alternative payment models in Vermont. The proposal shall be informed by the community and provider inclusive process set forth in section two of this act. So that's where I wanted a, a reference. Um, <clears throat> that's the delivery system transformation work. 
and designed to reduce inefficiencies, lower costs, improve population health outcomes, and increase access to essential services. And that's language that is used in that section too. The design and development of the proposal shall include consideration of alternative payment and delivery system approaches for hospital services and community-based providers, such as primary care providers, mental health providers, substance use disorder treatment providers, skilled nursing facilities, home health agencies, and providers of long-term services and supports. It says the alternative payment models to be explored must include, at a minimum, global payments for hospitals, geographically or regionally based global budgets for healthcare services, existing federal value-based payment models, and broader total cost of care and risk sharing models to address patient migration patterns across systems of care. It also says the alternative payment models must include appropriate mechanisms to convert fee-for-service reimbursements to predictable payments for multiple provider types including those described in subdivision two of this subsection A. So that was the list of uh, the such as primary care, mental health, et cetera. Include a process to ensure reasonable and adequate rates of payment and a reasonable and predictable schedule for rate updates and meaningfully impact health equity and address inequities in terms of access, quality, and health outcomes. To support the design and development of a proposed agreement with CMMI for Medicare's participation in multi care initiatives, which may include engaging consulting and analytic support, the following steps are appropriated from the general fund in FY 2023. And it's 550000 to the Agency of Human Services and 550000 to the Green Mountain Care Board. So this is taking the 500000 that had been. Um, allotted for other purposes in the bill and the 600,000 that was the board had requested for their work on uh, the, the Medicare having Medicare participate and it's combining those and then splitting them in half. So that was the idea that, rep that Senator Hardy mentioned yesterday and that looks like what they have agreed to here. And it just, we know that this, you know, it's going to approach, but they agreed to it at this point. That they have, they sent the language. Yeah, this is this is their language. Uh, yeah, they worked hard yesterday on this. I think it was yesterday. Did you have a question? Okay. Um, no one has to has before Jen moves on to the next section. I yeah, to good. So uh, I'll let Chris finish. Um, I'm ready to move on. I don't know if they're ready to move on. Yeah, no. So I never got an answer to whether the $500,000 is the right, uh, this section four. Yes. I never got an answer as to whether the $500,000 for HIE strategy. Oh, that should have, I think that, I think that we comes out. That. Yeah. I think that comes out and gets included in the, I didn't think about that, but I, I think that yes. half of, or almost half of what makes up the, the 1.1 1 .1 that gets split yeah. in section three. Okay. So I think that is just yeah. gone. Apologies, I should have remembered that. I just realizing as the bell is ringing, I have a house bell on the floor that I um, need to be there for. So I'm going to ask the uh, House Health Care Committee assistant to let me know when it's up. Uh, all right. That's fine. Um, so, so section four then would just be, wouldn't be subsection A, it would just be the language um, that was subsection A with the HIE steering committee continuing its work to create one health record for each person that integrates um, various data types as described um, and include a data integration strategy in the 2023 HIE strategic plan to merge and consolidate claims data in VCURES with clinical data and health information exchange, and then the appropriation would come out. Section five is the language that we looked at uh, a bit yesterday around VCURES and taking out the prohibition on um, 
information being filed with the board in a manner that discloses the identity of the protected person or patient. I did not make any changes there. Section 6 and 7 are on the blueprint. And uh, section six, I did not make any changes. This is reflecting the use of quality improvement facilitators in the blueprint. Section seven, we did make some changes based on um, some recommendations from or suggestion from the Jessica Barnard of the Medical Society. This is where the director of healthcare reform is reporting or recommending by September 1st. The amounts by which health insurers and Medicaid should increase the amount of the per person per month payments they make toward the shared cost of operating the blueprint community health teams and quality improvement facilitators. And then I changed her wording a little bit, but uh, it would say to contribute to the goal of increasing each plan's or payer's spending on primary care over time until primary care, and then we get away from this 12% concept until primary care reimbursement is sufficient to reflect the costs of providing comprehensive primary care services to Vermonters and to sustain access to primary care services in Vermont. And then the one which was added yesterday says that those increases should be reflected in insurers 2024 plan uh, rate filings if they cannot be implemented in a rate neutral manner. And then you've got a, a recommendation from Mary Kit Moment at Five State. Again, this morning, uh, suggesting instead to change the language so that it would say, recommend the amounts by which health insurance Medicaid should increase the amount of the per person per month payments they make toward the shared cost of operating the Blueprint Community Health Team and Quality Improvement Facilitators to contribute to the goal of increasing, we're still consistent, and increasing each plan for payers spending on primary care over time to add additional resources necessary for providing comprehensive primary care services to Vermonters and to sustain access to primary care. So she's, instead of um, getting quite as specific about uh, about increasing the reimbursement amounts, she's talking about adding additional resources uh, necessary. Um, yeah, I mean, it which, looks which may actually make more sense considering what is being the per person per month payments are not reimbursements per se. They are adding resources to the primary care practices to provide these services, the community health team and um, and quality improvement facilitators. So they're not they're not really reimbursement in the kind of fee for service sense. They are increasing the resources. Well, for me, it, it may be that this, that the language we have will allow for the resources. Well, I think it, I think the language that is in the bill, as I'm kind of thinking through Mary Kate's proposal here, I think the language that is in the bill right now talks about increasing per person per month payment, per person per month payments contributing to the goal of increasing spending on primary care over time until primary care reimbursement is sufficient to reflect the costs. But it's not really, it's not going into rates. It's not going into reimbursement rates, this, these additional per person per month payments. So I think Mary Kate's idea of framing them as adding resources is probably more reflective of reality than. So what do we think for many? I mean, that, that does make sense. But what line are you on, Jen? I am on, I'm sort of jumping between 17 and 21, just as far as uh, the, the way that one of page in 12. So, um, so, she, so Mary Kate's language would strike out after over time. So it would, it would take out until primary care and reimbursement is sufficient reflect the costs of and she would instead have it say uh, after over time to add additional resources necessary for providing comprehensive that makes it actually makes a lot of sense right. actually i think it okay because it comes up front yeah yeah exactly exactly i think yes. that's a good way of saying it yes 
it's it's adding upfront yes. money to be able to provide services yes. beyond just what they would ordinarily be billing for. Right. Okay. The care coordination and um, got it. Does that make sense to folks? Are you okay with you okay with that? that yeah. Okay. okay. Um, All right. Good. All right, thank you, Mary Kate. All right, a few more things here. Section eight is the options for extending moderately supports. Um, and most of this is, as we have looked at it, it's the working group considering a number of things around uh, moderate needs supports and how, whether and how to extend those. Patrick Flood had recommended, and you were interested in the working group also looking at dual eligibles. Yeah. And so I added, and because it doesn't necessarily flow out of the, the moderate needs part, I put it as its own subsection that the working group shall also make recommendations regarding changes to service delivery for persons who are duly eligible for Medicaid and Medicare in order to improve care, expand options, and reduce unnecessary cost shifting and duplication. And then for C, I'm just going to run through all of these and then decide if you want to come. Um, in C, I specifically called out that's the part where the department collaborates with others in AHS to incorporate the working group's recommendations into the proposals and negotiations for that next, next global commitment demonstration. And so I, I clarified that that was specifically about the moderate needs group. So that wasn't and Patrick had said and put those into the waiver and you had wanted to hear about them first. So this is directing then just that they incorporate the working group's recommendations on extending access to long-term home and community-based services and supports into the proposals and negotiations for that next, next global commitment demonstration. And then in D, where they're reporting, they would report on both. So they would report their working group's findings and recommendations, including its recommendations regarding service delivery for duly eligible individuals, and an estimate of any funding that would be needed to implement. And then it had said those because it was all about the moderate needs group, but now it's the working group's recommendations. Okay. Okay. And that is it for changes. All right. Uh, any any of uh, any of the changes that you were looking at that you wanted to address? I'll look at the committee first, and I see that one that my picture. First. Right, and then I can just remind you again of what changes you have made to what is in front of, or requested to what is in front of you that I will put into the draft. Mike, did you want to comment? Uh, it, Jen may be about to cover this. I was looking for Mike Fisher, healthcare advocate clarification about whether you're looking for language in this draft about the concept that I think Patrick put forward that the yeah, you know, let me say that some that needs that assessment be done the process yeah. that this process include a recognition of the um, is there a place to put that um, I, I think there is. I think when we are, and I don't know if that's at the necessarily at the community engagement process level or at, at a broader. Don't want to confuse level. what's happening with the in the community engagement process. I mean, we'll probably clearly pick up a lot of information about that. But right, you know, this is really more of an administrative task that would happen prior to. Well, right. I mean, it sounds it sounds like at least as a as a um, beginning step you are interested in this process looking at really the capacity they don't design a plan for something that is completely unworkable in our yes community provider system yes um, and so, so to reflect that so a lot of this is focusing on the patient focused community inclusive plan um, but I think maybe we could put in a standalone subsection that says in doing this work they need to be mindful of the capacity yeah does that of the of the community yes that's perfect i agree and then my father my, my second clarification were we thinking or was the chair thinking that a definition 
of value base belonged in this bill or a separate vehicle? Well, if we had if we had something, we would put it in. But I'm not, you know, that's not something I, I I would personally like to have it for my own edification. But uh, and but it will there will be time to put it into the bill as it goes forward. But, um, you know, I don't think we want to, we don't have to do that now. All right. So, uh, I used that word things, twice in two days. Are there other things you want to discuss about the changes before I go through and tell you what I think I have, what I think my marching orders are? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Okay. Um, so potentially looking for a definition of value-based payments to add in section one. Section two, adding what I think will be a new subsection C um, about being mindful of the capacity of the community-based provider system and whatever redesign uh, plan emerges. Taking out the standalone subsection on um, on a report back on the funding necessary for the community-based healthcare and social service providers to implement the plan. Um, then the next change would come on page eight in the, uh, just taking out the money for the HIE work because that money is being used elsewhere. And then on page 12 under the blueprint, making the change that Mary Kate Mullen had suggested to reflect the impact of those increased blueprint payments to the practices. And I think that's it. Sounds good. The other side of the Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Robin has provided, uh, she got a message that you all were looking for a federal definition of value-based care. I don't think it's value-based care so much value-based payments. Um, so I may have to, I may have to circle back with her, but um, okay. So hopefully we'll be able to find you something. So we are, we're, we're pumpkins at 11 o'clock. Yeah, I know you are. So I'm wondering, I see Katie is here. I'm wondering if it yeah, is. Well, and, I, and I'm getting ready. Exactly. I'm getting ready to have a bill. And you've got, so you got I'm going to go. No, one, yes. It's what this bill, you are at $5 million. Pardon bill. me? The bill, you're at $5 million. $5 million in this one? So far. I don't know if this Still $5 million. Million. Nobody yeah. shattered anything. So I'm going to go to the set, to the house floor and listen to my bill and use my laptop to make these changes. Um, and you can let Aaron know if you finish with Katie and already for me, otherwise I'll come back when the bill is done. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> Does that have to do something with the vote? No, yesterday is the clerk. The roll call. Yeah. Well, aren't I? I'm not supposed to deliver that no, no, you don't have to. You give it to him, okay. and he keeps it in the official records. Okay. So if there's any question about the vote, that's the official document. Just making sure I was supposed to go to the no. Yeah, office. no, the reporter of oh, the bill takes that. You're just ready. got nervous. Didn't let you down. Not you did. <laughs> Come on up, Katie.